My name's Jaya Sara. Yes. And I'm from Australia. And it's really hard to speak because in the last month, my country's been on fire. And you talked about defending the thoughts off, which I've had to do a lot in regards to thinking about half a billion animals that have been burnt to death, and millions and millions and millions of trees perished. And it's, it feels like an overwhelming grief for the country. Yes. And I think it's also for the world. But I don't know how many people outside of Australia are aware of... I think the whole world is aware of it. And the whole even, world has been following it with, uh, yeah. with a lot of uh, actually extreme sadness. And you hear about these volunteer firefighters that risk their lives for people's property and animals and, <coughs> and they're all traumatised by hearing screaming koalas being burnt to death, you know. And I guess my question is about, there's a sense that people intellectualise that, well, this is climate change. And part of me in my heart feels like Australia is paying the price for what we did to the Aboriginal people only uh, 200 years ago. And there was such a, a genocide of that culture, 40,000 year old culture, which is irreplaceable, like the koalas. So I feel like it's karmic. But I guess I wanted to just hear some of your wisdom around how to hold something as mammoth, as gigantic as this. What we have here in Australia currently is, without a doubt, the karmic repercussions of what has taken place there over the last 150 to 200 years. Because the conceptual suffering that the new Australians are undergoing now and will undergo in the coming years is the suffering which actually has happened because of the past transgressions and is also the suffering which will force the continent to move into a transformational process which is unparalleled in the history of the new Australians. You are not the only one who will have to bear this pain, as you know. It is something being experienced by, by millions of Australians. The Aboriginal people fundamentally have an entirely different experience of what is going on. The suffering that they are undergoing is not of the same kind. And why I'm saying this is that when you have a 40,000 year old genetic inheritance and a tradition, it has incorporated sufferings of various kinds which the systems of the Aboriginal people are able to bear in a different way. Their conceptual suffering has a different quality than that of the new Australians because the Aboriginal people are operating from a wider range of consciousness in general. What I mean by that is that it is not simply the emotional and the conceptual, it is also the transformative parts of their being, the, the occult, where the occult is in operation. They are very comfortable in that range of consciousness. When you 
take the new Australians whose training is largely conceptual, where the consciousness is not expanded in order to be able to even bear something like that. We are going to see a lot of extreme cases of conceptual illness in the coming year, two, three, four, five, and so on. Compounded with the alcohol, this is going to result in some major problems in Australia, conceptual, mental issues in the upcoming times, and that is the price being paid. The conceptual issues that are going to be faced are something which Australia doesn't know till now. It's a new thing that's going to happen, because there is somewhere deep down a very deep guilt which is starting to emerge now. And that is what is also emerging in you. Now, it doesn't help if all the new Australians are guilty for the next 20 years. We need to transform something very radically there in that continent. It is not the same as in other parts of the world. Something has happened there which the world has never seen. And when it comes to the Aboriginal people, because of that expanded consciousness, their, their approach to that suffering is different. When the Europeans came to take over the, the Australian continent and the atrocities that were committed on those people, they bore it, a lot of it, they just simply bore it. Because the consciousness expanded beyond the conceptual and they were just there. They, they knew that something is going on which is not at all okay. They also knew that those who have done it to them will pay a price. The point is that the generation that is now, what can be done to transform their way of living and operating in this world? That will be a solution. Otherwise, there's going to be a lot of problems upcoming, which have not even been known till now. And the solution to that is actually the practice of expansion of consciousness, because it will impact the communication with the Aboriginal people, which is dismal at the moment. You have two peoples next to each other that have no clue what the other one is talking about. The Aboriginal people also have to expand more in the area of the conceptual, so that that conceptual communication is possible. But the new Australians have to expand into the transformative, so that that occult communication is possible. It is both peoples now have to do something about it quite concretely. Because what we have seen there is, is unparalleled. This has never happened in, in, in recorded history, anywhere in the world. It is a very, very extreme karmic inheritance. And that gung-ho and that, that absolute ignorance of the enormity of what has been committed there will now be addressed. It will be. If on an individual level you want to transform that, then it is about actually understanding that your genetic inheritance is not a pretty one. And if you want to transform that from inside out, then it is about bending down to the master within trying to observe where each action emerges from, you know what I mean? It's about you being in surrender, you being in humility, a humility which your ancestors have not known. They, they, for them, humility has been a laying down of weapons, surrender as being giving up, rather than taking up the, the weapons against the ego. That entire continent is the, 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 the new civilization that imposed itself there, is, is an outgrowth of, of one big collective ego, isn't it? And that is what we need to transform. Australia will be forced to do it in the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years. It will, there will be a transformation that will be, that will start to take place there. I'm thinking of moving to New Zealand, though. <laughs> I'm, I'm, and I'm wondering if that's uh, a cop-out. I don't know, if it just seems more selfish. This is all moralistic stuff. It, you will carry your karma with you wherever you go. Okay. 
you transform it within yourself. Your responsibility is first to transform that part of the ego which is preventing you from living the truth. And then you can live in Australia or New Zealand or wherever it is, that is a secondary thing. Of course, one would imagine that to now give in to that space that has nurtured you all these years and given to you would be a flowy thing to do, but you have to go within, you know. That, that grief and that pain is something which is even superficial compared to actually what needs transformation. You know what I mean? I think so. It's the tuning in, bending down, you are in a spiritual process, so you will be able to transform it. And in that process, help the country in some way? Absolutely, absolutely. First, the tune in to the Self, and the Self, the Soul, the Source, the Truth will action you. Why, why are the animals suffering so much? I mean, do we just go, well, in the past, they were the ones that committed the uh, atrocities? The animals are suffering due to the ignorance of the people that are surrounding them. And that suffering, its karmic consequences is on the people. So finally it's the people who suffer. It's big, big stuff going on there, it's not a small thing. No, just... It is a wake-up call. The yeah. whole continent has to wake up. And that potential for that continent to actually develop into something amazing, it's, a, it's an amazing possibility as an experimental field for spiritual transformation, because it's still a small population for such a big space. But that huge ego of the conqueror will be broken now, it's being broken. And it will continue to break until those transformations happen. Just like what is happening in Europe, what is going on in Europe? The ego is being broken down and it will continue to be broken down, broken down, broken down until on a collective level that self-transformation processes take real hold.